what a day. Hello guys, how are you getting on? My name is Aaron Kelly and welcome back to another Euro 2020 video. We now know that Italy will face England in the final of Euro 2020 at Wembley this Sunday. But the semi-finals were very eventful, I think it's fair to say. In this video we're going to go through both semi-finals. I'm not going to make a prediction for the final today. I do plan on filming a separate video later on in the week previewing the final. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm also thinking of doing a live reactions to the final. Is that something people would like to see? Similar to what myself and Jack did for the Champions League final. If it is, let me know. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to start off with Italy versus Spain at Wembley in the first semi-final. Then Italy ran out as victors after winning on penalties and I have to say Spain put in a very very good performance a surprising performance that I didn't expect them to put in they dug in they showed actually a lot of really good quality particularly in the first half I think Pedri was by far their best player he was fabulous in the middle of the park the way he slid them balls through there was one for Oyarzabal that he really should have put away but just the general tempo to their passing was something that I've not seen from a Spain team in a long long time really to be quite honest with you and it was actually showing shades of their win against Germany a couple of months ago I think it was like the Nations League or a friendly or something along those lines and to be be quite honest with you they were unlucky not to be in front in that first half Italy didn't really show up at all they were just backs against the wall having a lot of men behind the ball doing a lot of defending and had a couple of threatening moments but like Donnarumma was forced into a few absolutely brilliant saves as well Spain will have felt quite disappointed to have not gone in front in that first half which is something I wasn't predicting to be saying at half time in that game but I was second half then Italy started trying to increase their tempo and improve the accuracy of their passing and start being more creative in the final third and they finally did take the lead and it was another brilliant goal at Wembley as well from Federico Chiesa and he pretty much recreated his own celebration from when he scored in like the last 16 or whatever it was. It was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful goal and a great move because it started off with Donnarumma and there was a few really, really good passes, good tempo, good accuracy to them. Chiesa picks up the pieces and absolutely buries it past Unai Simon in the Spanish goal but to be fair to Spain, they had to dig in, they had to show great character to get back into that game they brought on Alvaro Morata didn't start the game and he repaid the manager's faith to bring him on and it was a really really good goal lovely one two between himself and Danny Olmo and a really good finish with the left peg of Alvaro Morata could Donnarumma have done better for it perhaps but he buried it late on in the day to bring Spain level and bring us to extra time there was a couple of chances in extra time but no goals so we went to penalties everybody's favor Manuel Locatelli stepped up first for Italy and he had his penalty saved by Unai Simon it wasn't a great penalty to be quite frank Locatelli's blushes were spared though because Danny almost stepped up next and he hit the absolute rose of Wembley with an awful penalty to really let Italy off the hook straight away Andrea Bellotti stepped up next and he buried it to the left hand side of the goal Jared Moreno stepped up next and he absolutely buried it into the top right hand corner next up was Leonardo Bonucci who absolutely buried his as well Thiago was next for Spain and a very 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 cool penalty into the bottom corner from him. Bernadeschi stepped up next, he scored, and next up was Alvaro Morata. I know we've taken the piss out of Morata quite a bit on this channel, um, and during this tournament in particular, but I straight up just feel bad for the bloke now, to be quite honest with you. He can't catch a break. Once he comes on, he's the hero, he gets the equaliser, and then he misses his penalty. It was a poor one, to be fair. Donnarumma saves it, in nowhere really near a corner, not an awful lot of power on it. Didn't really hide where he was going to put it with his run-up. Donnarumma saved it. And up next was Jorginho with a chance to win the game for Italy and he did it in the coolest, most Jorginho way you can ever imagine. What a penalty and it symbolises what an incredible tournament and what an incredible last 12 months Jorginho has had both for club and country. A brilliant penalty into the bottom corner, a little hop, skip and jump. To have the audacity and the composure to do that in such a massive moment, such a massive kick to send your country to a European Championship final. As Eddie Hearn once said, this man has got a set of bollocks on him. Italy went through and I felt kind of bad for Spain because they actually performed quite well. It wasn't the best performance from Italy. Kind of reminded me of their performance against Austria where they didn't do particularly well. It wasn't their best game. They did it the hard way, but they got it done. And can I just say the penalties were over before they even started when Jordi Alba was getting absolutely bullied by Chiellini. I fucking love that man. He's amazing. So Italy then has to wait 24 hours to find out who they would face. And England beat Denmark by two goals to one at Wembley but it certainly wasn't 
without its controversy, was it? There was a lot leading up to the game with, with Kasper Schmeichel and some comments he made about it oh, not coming home or whatever. I'm not bothered talking about anything like that, the Kasper Schmeichel beef, because I'm just here to talk about football. Denmark have done so, so well to get to this point, and I was afraid that they might be a little, try to be a little bit negative and not try and attack England, but to be fair to them, they weathered the early storm, and they actually took the lead thanks to an absolutely brilliant free kick by Damsgaard. Don't get me wrong, it was a decent strike, but Jordan Pickford, I think, has got to save that. Like, as I said, it's hit with power by Damsgaard, but it's nowhere really near a corner. It's quite central in the goal. Do I think I would have saved it? Probably not, okay? We, we've all seen our football videos. It didn't take England long to get level then when Bukayo Saka's cross was turned into his own net by Simon Kerr. And to be fair, there wasn't an awful lot he could have done about that. If he had missed it, Raheem Sterling surely would have put it in at the back post anyway. And England went into half-time level. The second half then was, I think it's fair to say, all England. Got to a point kind of midway through the second half when you kind of felt like Denmark were trying to play for... Um, extra time and penalties at that point. Brought off the likes of Kasper Dahlberg and Damsgaard who were giving them a lot of respite for the defence and actually creating a good few chances as well and were looking like the bright sparks for Denmark. And they kind of went a bit negative from there and England were all over them, creating chances. There was a few very, very close moments towards the end of the 90 minutes. But they held out inside 90 minutes and it went to extra time. I didn't really have much faith that Denmark could hold on because it really did feel like they were moments away from falling asunder. But England England finally did take the lead and there's a lot of controversy about this and I can see why. Raheem Sterling runs down the line, there is two footballs on the pitch which usually would be a good enough reason for the referee to stop the game. Anyway I digress, he says that it wasn't really affecting the play even though you know it was right beside the play but he says it wasn't affecting it so whatever, fair enough. Sterling runs into the box, uh, Jensen and Mela are both kind of coming across. Raheem Sterling, Mela goes to try and nip the ball off him, and my first reaction was Mela has taken him down clumsily, um, Sterling feels a touch in the box, he's always going to go down. That was my initial reaction. And then I seen the replays. <laughs> there is zero contact here between Mela and Raheem Sterling, and it, it's an absolutely atrocious decision really, and the fact that it, it does go to VAR, they look at it, and they still somehow feel as though Mela touched Sterling. I don't get it. I, I don't get where the contact is. There is none. You, like, you can look at it from every single angle. There's no contact on Raheem Sterling there. It should never have been a penalty. And some will argue the play should have even been stopped before the incident had a chance to play out because of the two footballs on the pitch. Either way, Harry Kane steps up. Schmeichel saves the penalty. And he gets so, so lucky, Harry Kane, the way the ball just kind of ricochets back into his path. He buries it. Unfortunate for Schmeichel because he really had kept Denmark in that game. He made some unbelievable saves. One from uh, Harry Maguire header. Another one from uh, pretty much a one-on-one -on -one with Raheem Sterling. Only for him, England could have easily wrapped this game up inside 90 minutes. It was unlucky the way the penalty worked out for him. And that is how the game finished. And look... Uh, if I was Danish right now, I would be absolutely furious, and with good reason. With, with good reason, because Raheem Sterling there, there's absolutely zero contact. It's never a penalty. They'll feel like they could easily have got that game to penalties, and they could be in a European final now. But uh, we never know. We'll never know. Uh, over over the face of the game, like if you watch the game, like you can't argue. Uh, England deserved to win the game, absolutely. Like They were the better team, created far more chances. They were thoroughly dominant, particularly in that second half and all the way through extra time. But it just leaves a little bit of a sour taste in the mouth, the way they've done it. Um, and the way, you know, the defining moment of that game being... A Raheem Sterling dive and you know you can paint it whatever you way whatever way you want Sterling is dived there he you can argue that he's anticipating the touch from Mela like that's a bit of a flowery way of putting it but like he's dived he's dived and Harry Kane scored and England progressed to face Italy and I think overall when you look at the tournament in England and Italy have been the best two teams across the tournament so nobody can argue that these two are the two that are in the final and nobody can argue that England should have won this game but it's just the manner in which they won it which gets gets to me and gets to a lot of people I'm sure. That's where I'm going to wrap it up lads I am hoping to get another video out maybe the morning of the final or maybe Saturday evening we will see uh, basically predicting and doing a little preview for the final. Let me know your early predictions for the final in the comments section down below let me know what you thought of that sterling penalty and VAR as a whole and uh, yeah we'll see you next time take care and good luck also subscribe bye bye